$6,600. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Dak Prescott, $200 more, I equally like a lot. In fact, I'm probably going to have a 50-50 split. So in my eyes, these guys are pretty much the same. I wrote Matt Ryan because he's a little bit cheaper. Uh, Dak Prescott does do awesome at home, and he's got rushing upside. So for $200 more, essentially the same price. Dak probably gets the bump for me, but it's again, it's really close. The price differential uh, is kind of why I had Matt Ryan there. But again, I'm totally fine with both Dak and Matt Ryan. Again, Ryan throws in zone. It is caught for the touchdown. Gage. Fourth touchdown pass today for Matt Ryan. And you know what? Kind of thought the same thing. Touchdown. Make it three on the day for Dak Prescott. Mike Evans, if Godwin does not play, again, don't remember the last time I saw a guy go on concussion protocol on a Wednesday and play on a Sunday. Doesn't usually happen, so I like Mike Evans right there. He is probably my favorite sneaky tournament play of the week. Uh, Tyler Higby, right underneath that, if Jarrett Lever does not play, I like him for $4,700, something to monitor, and I already talked about him. Jordan Reed, Kittle does not play. Jordan Reed, $2,600, starting tight end for the San Francisco 49ers. How can you not do it, right? Brady pumps and throws. Back shoulder for Evans, and just like that, touchdown Tampa Bay. Second down after the penalty play action. Golf with time. Golf with Higby open in the end zone. Touchdown Rams. Number three today to Tyler Higby. Happens. They're going to go to the stack formation. And Garoppolo is going to look again for Reed, and he's got Reed again. The second touchdown of the first half for Jordan Reed. And. some uh we had some pretty good hits last uh last week we did we definitely did uh with the core four didn't quite work out the way we uh hoped for paris campbell getting hurt certainly put a damper on that very frustrated to see zach pascal and uh mo alley cox get all the work this should have been paris campbell's but uh i mean we nailed at a quarterback rojo found the end zone derrick henry did not find the end zone but he did get some yardage uh but all our other pieces hit we i actually cashed in 70 uh percent of my lineups this week last week so uh very good week for me but hey week two's in behind us we're not we're not going to be sitting on our uh, profits right now we're going to be uh going right back in the tank what's going on everyone my name is the big ac andy chevalier aka 401 crew one on DraftKings. we got that brand new youtube page to the fantasy life with ac also on facebook as well the fantasy life with ac got the twitter page up and running as well at trivia with a see on twitter make sure you uh like follow hit that hulk smash button on the uh like there and uh get all the up-to-date info for week number three and every week going forward all right question of the week from last week let's see what we had over here uh which tight end currently a backup for his current team who has been a headache for fantasy owners over the past years who drafted in 2013 out of the university of florida had his breakout season 2015 where he scored 87 receptions, recorded 87 receptions, 952 yards, 11 touchdowns, despite never playing a full 16-game season during his career. Keyword on that one was definitely headache. And the correct answer, of course, Jordan Reed, who was in almost 100% of my lineups last week. Absolute monster. Great example of how you know opportunity is such a key factor in determining your players every week. Jordan Reed was the correct answer. A couple of people did get that right. First person to get that right was Brian Finn. Brian, you win a $1 DraftKings uh, lineup. Any contest you want for $1, that is yours. Corey Trader last week came within a point of cashing in his lineup. It was only a $1 tournament, but it was kind of fun sweating that out with him. So uh, you never know. Could turn into uh, something pretty cool. 
Uh, let's check out what we got for uh, week number three's question of the week. Currently, uh, what current NFL quarterback currently leads in the NFL in pass attempts going into week number three? Again, does not count last night's game. Going into week number three, what quarterback leads the NFL in pass attempts? The answer may surprise you. The answer may surprise you. Uh, first person to get that right in the chat, comments, wherever we uh, post this. YouTube comments, doesn't matter. First person to get it right wins a $1 uh, DraftKings contest. Anyone they want to play, any lineup. All right, so let's go over target leaders of the week. Again, this is very important because targets equals points. You get a full catch. You get a full point for any catch, so target's pretty important. Let's check it out. Going into week number three, our target leaders, DeAndre Hopkins, top of the list. No surprise to me. I mean, this guy has started off on Fuego. 22 catches on his 25 targets. That is pretty, pretty good uh something we're going to want to keep track of. we're going to talk a lot about nuke this show darren waller first tight end on the list uh 24 targets he uh had a monster game against the saints mari cooper dallas is going to be behind in a lot of games mari cooper that is just going to constantly be going up for him deontay johnson again over uh juju smith schuster on this list you're always going to get Deontay at a, at a discount, folks. Always have Deontay Johnson in your range. DJ Moore uh, underneath that with 22 targets, not finding the end zone. Yardage is okay. We wish it was a little bit better. Uh, Robbie Anderson underneath that at 18 catches. Uh, his you know his teammate doing a lot more with what he's getting. That's what it, folks. And over 200 yards receiving, one touchdown. Robbie Anderson always a discount from DJ Moore too. Something we're going to want to keep track there. Calvin Ridley, 22 targets. Russell Gage, 21 targets. Both having great seasons so far. A name you're not seeing on this list, Julio Jones. Where's Julio Jones in this list? We're going to talk more about that uh, later this show. He might not play this week, so we're really liking Calvin Ridley, Russell Gage this week. Uh, A.J. Green with 22 catches, not doing a lot with that there. Only eight catches on his 22 targets. Stefan Diggs, talk about a guy I had no shares of. Never on the radar. Got him in zero season-long leagues. The guy is showing up and showing up big. Uh, 16 catches so far, over 200 yards receiving. Rounding out this list, Devonta Adams, no surprise there. Travis Kelsey, no surprise there. And the model of consistency, Travis Kelsey. A-Rob on this list, 18 catches. This is the last week I'm going to rely on you, big dog. A-Rob on this list, 18 catches, only catching eight of those. Keenan Allen, 18 targets. I think that's only going to increase with Justin Herbert as the quarterback. Two Patriot uh, receivers on this list, both with 18 targets. Julian Edelman and Nikhil Harry both coming off pretty good games. And Kamara and Tyree Kill, no surprise seeing two Kansas City Chiefs on this lineup so again keep track of those target leaders because that is how you make your money seeing the discounts there particularly deontay johnson and robbie anderson let's go over our core four this week so before i do that i was talking to her last night you know in the, in the post about mopping up the competition m-o-p what's that stand for mop mop stands for matchup opportunity and price why are those three things important so let's go with matchup number one m Matchup isn't just necessarily the team you're facing. Yeah, we always like to pick on the same teams. Cincinnati, Minnesota, the Giants, the Jets, Titans, Atlanta, of course, Seattle, Dallas. We love picking on the same teams. Miami, picking on the same teams each and every week. But it's also who the receiver is, is playing. It's also who the what type of defensive line the running back is playing. So, again, if you're facing, you know, Carolina, obviously one of the best examples to use here. They have just one of the worst defensive lines. So again, the matchup is so important when crafting your lineups. Next on this list is O, and that's opportunity. And that's it doesn't matter if the matchup's great. If the guy's not getting on the field, what does it matter? We want opportunities. We want starters. We want guys who are going to get in. We're going to talk more about that later on with guys we have on our list. And last and uh, not most importantly, but very important, Price, P, M O P, Price, uh, I E, Jordan Reed, right? He checked off everything. Matchup against the Jets, check. Opportunity, no George Kittle, check. $2,600, check plus, right there for Jordan Reed. And that's why, to me, it was a no brainer to have jo uh, Jordan Reed in your lineups last week. So, again, M O P to mop up the competition, check out that matchup, opportunity. 
and Price. Let's see who we got for uh, quarterback on our core four over here. Top of the list. A lot of quarterbacks that kind of stood out to me this week. But I went with the guy that I thought was the safest play by far, and that's Kyler Murray. Six dollars $800. Picking on Detroit, of course. Just we're sticking with the formula here. The guy's getting it done on the ground, in the air. Uh, if you look at his numbers on the ground, he's had over 60 yards rushing in both games. He actually had over 100 yards rushing week one, but he took two shotgun kneel downs that brought him down to 91 yards. So that was a little frustrating. Uh, but again, he's getting it done every week again. And these were against not, you know, cupcake matches. He had San Francisco in San Francisco week one, scored 27 points, a full strength defensively San Francisco. Week two, Washington. Not an easy defense. Another tough defense. Scored 33. Who does they get this week? The Detroit Lions. One of the worst defenses. So we love some Kyler Murray this week. You will not be disappointed with his production. Next on this list, this should not be a surprise. Austin Eckler, $6,800. Same price as Kyler Murray facing that Carolina Panthers. Again, we're just going to attack them every week. We're putting that thumb over the name, and we're attacking Carolina. Now, that be said, Josh Kelly, $5,000, has the same amount of carries as Austin Eckler this season so far. Austin Eckler only has four more catches than Josh Kelly. Austin Eckler does beat out Josh Kelly in snap percentage. Absolutely. But in regards to production, they were very, very similar. So if you want to go Josh Kelly for $5K for $1,800 less, totally on board with that makes sense to me but i think austin eckler's more of a sure thing i mean we saw it last week right with Ro rojo and leonard fournette leonard fournette i said it wouldn't it be frustrating leonard fournette came in got got some of the work he did they both had solid games but again this could be another snare where i'm we're smash button austin eckler and josh kelly comes in so again if you want to use josh kelly for 5k I don't think it's going to be a stretch to get 15 points out of Josh Kelly this week. So I like both of these guys very much. Next on this list, a guy we're going to be using a ton this year, Calvin Ridley, 7,200, big price right there. But again, I had this guy on my list even if Julio Jones didn't play. Um, love this guy this week against Tennessee. Tennessee is not a good secondary. A secondary we picked on a lot last year. We're going to pick on a lot this year. Love me some Calvin Ridley. No Julio Jones just makes me like him even more the guy is getting it done he has two touchdowns both of his game but the best part about calvin ridley is he doesn't need those touchdowns to get a return on value he has seven or more catches in both of his games over 100 yards in both of his games so if you take away the touchdowns he's getting you a return on your investment so i like him a lot uh and last on this list i'm grabbing that flag i'm playing it down this is my guy this week he will be in 100 percent of my lineups tight end drew sample who is drew sample ac have you lost your mind so drew sample is the cincinnati Bengals tight end this week he's got philly and let me let me talk you off the ledge just so you know i'm not crazy right now drew sample when C.J. Uzama went out, was having a great game against Cleveland last week. He gets he, he gets injured towards ACL, awful injury. Drew Sample comes in. He gets nine targets right off the rip, right? Drew Sample comes in. Doesn't get a lot of yards. He catches seven of his targets, uh, only 45 yards. Not fantastic. But again, no surprise to me at all that the rookie quarterback is going after his tight ends. A.J. Green is dropping a lot of passes. Only caught eight of his 20-plus targets this season. So, again, seeing that Burrow is going towards his tight end is not a surprise at all. So the match, and more importantly, look at the matchup this week. Philly. Philly's led up big games against two tight ends back in a row. Both tight ends, not necessarily amazing tight ends. Logan Thomas, week one. Tyler Higby just scored three against them last week. So Philly might just be that defense you pick on. They might replace the Arizona Cardinals as that go-to uh, tight end attack mode. Uh, Phil, I'm, again, matchup, great. Opportunity, check mark. Price, fantastic. I'm liking everything I'm seeing out of Drew Sample here. So he will be in 100% of my lineups. I'm putting my flag down, saying it with my chest right here. Love me some Drew Sample. Uh, total salary for all four of these guys, 24300 here. We're under that $25,000 mark. If we, leave, if we use a minimal price defense, which I suggest every single week, we're leaving ourselves with about $24,000, $23,000 to, to fill four roster spots. So, again, I like 
the construction of this, I think you're giving yourself a lot of options. You can do that Kyler Murray, uh, DeAndre Hopkins stack. You can attack that Dallas Atlanta, uh, that excuse me, that Dallas Seattle game. A lot of ways you can kind of go with this if you start with this lineup. Uh, let's look at running backs we're liking this week. I like that new uh, graphic right there. Uh, top of the list, uh, highest price guys I'm going to be using for running back Dalvin Cook. Um, Tennessee just let up a big game against James Robinson last week. So I'm liking uh, Dalvin Cook. He seems to be the only consistent and positive thing out of this Minnesota offense. Game script's in his favor. He is the pass catching back. So I do like his matchup significantly. Underneath that, this guy almost made my core four, but I just couldn't not attack Carolina. Miles Sanders, again, we're attacking Cincinnati. This is a guy we're just going to... You know, this is a team we're going to attack all year long. Miles Sanders, $6,400. In his debut game, he almost rushed for 100 yards. He's catching passes. He got in the end zone. I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of Miles Sanders. And, of course, Cincinnati just a week ago let up not one but two 100-yard rushers in the same game in Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. So, like me, some Miles Sanders here. One of my favorite plays of the week. Underneath that, we got two discount plays, Mike Davis, Jarek McKinnon. I do have a preference for Mike Davis. I think he has less competition. I think game script will be more in their favor. Um, to ca- you know, His specialty is that pass catching back, so I like Mike Davis. Jarek McKinnon, I am very concerned that Jeff Wilson Jr. will get 50% of the touches behind the backfield. Also, something that no one's kind of really even talking about, I think the San Francisco 49ers are petrified to play football at MetLife Stadium right now. They lost five of their superstars in one week at MetLife, and they have to go back there. That is just not good. So I think they're going to ride with Jeff Wilson Jr. more than Jarek McKinnon owners would want to admit. Um, That being said, the matchup is so good, right? The matchup is just absolutely luscious. So $4,900, I like him. Jeff Wilson Jr., I believe, is the minimum price at four grand as well. So I like both of those guys right there. Mike Davis kind of gets the bump for me. Um... Let's look at receivers that we're liking this week. Again, top of the list, of course, DeAndre Hopkins sacking him with Kyler Murray. That DeAndre Hopkins might be 100% ownership. The only reason why I wouldn't use DeAndre Hopkins is if I had a 50-50 cash game with Kyler Murray, and you just don't want to sack in 50-50. So, I mean, at every tournament, I use Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins there. He's the guy. Doesn't look like Christian Kirk's going to play, so that's only going to give him more targets. Love me some nuke. Calvin Ridley, I know I talked about him in my core four. Just want to emphasize him. Julio Julio does not play. Calvin Ridley needs to be in your lineups. Um, Amari Cooper underneath that, $6,500. Again, this is a game we're attacking. Dallas, Seattle, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, all, you know, roughly the same price. I do like C.D. Lamb. I don't, I don't have him in my list right here. But, again, I like all using all four of these guys. I like using multiples of these guys. You want to have D.K. Metcalf and Lockett in your lineup? Totally fine with that. that to me, that makes 100% sense. So, um, just smash this game. Attack this game. All Dallas players are in play. All Seattle players are in play. Chris Carson, Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, all the receivers. You can even throw in some tight ends there if you want to. But, uh I, uh, yeah, we're, we're attacking this game this week, but these are my favorite plays of this game. Uh, other receivers that I have in play, Allen Robinson, dude, this is it. This is it for you. If you don't, if you don't beat Atlanta, you're not doing, you got something else on your mind. So Allen Robinson made the cut this week. He, he will, uh, he will be in my lineups. Keenan Allen, again, we talked about how Justin Herbert came in, and that was his favorite target. So I like Keenan Allen right there a lot. Great matchup, of course, against Carolina. Opposite of him, we got Robbie Anderson facing uh, the Chargers. Not a great matchup, but Robbie Anderson's getting the targets. Game script will be in his favor, and I just like what I'm seeing out of Robbie Anderson right now. He's not touchdown dependent, which is also something I like. One also one of my favorite plays of the week. I talked about Miles Sanders earlier. This is probably the receiver that I like the most that is not in my core four, and that's Darius Slayton, $4,900. Sterling Shepard. On injured reserve, boo-boo thumb. He's on injured reserve. He's not playing this week or the foreseeable future. San Francisco 49ers appear to be a good defense, right? No, not necessarily. Certainly not anymore. They just lost not two of their best defensive players. They lost two of the best defensive players in the NFL. Two defensive ends no longer playing right now. So, Darius Slayton's going to get more time to go down the field and run his routes. Danny Dimes is going to get a couple more seconds in the pocket. Watch Darius Slayton have a big game here. Again, $4,900. Loving the price here. Uh, and he's going to get the opportunity here, folks. 
Uh, last on this list, I got Zach Pascal. Paris Campbell going down. Doesn't look like Rivers is going to be able to rely on T.Y. Hilton so far this season. Matchup is fantastic. The opportunity is there, and the price is great with Zach Pascal. So, again, he made the list for me. Let's look at tight ends I'm using this week. Again, Drew Samples in 100% of my line, but these are other guys I don't mind putting in the flex that I think are going to get a fantastic opportunity. Topping this list, Jonu Smith against Minnesota. Again, looks like John, uh, A.J. Brown not playing this week, so I like Jonu Smith quite a lot for $5,200. Next on this list, probably my favorite play if I wasn't going to use Sample. This is the guy I was going to use. Dallas Goddard against Cincinnati. Um, doesn't look like Jalen Rager is going to play this week. So I really like Dallas Goddard a lot. He seems to be outperforming Zach Ertz. Not sure what's going on there in Philly. I don't know if Ertz is trying to get out of there or whatnot. But yeah, Dallas Goddard looks to kind of be the future at tight end. And this week, watch him feast. Jalen Rager doesn't play in a game where this is a must win for Carson Wentz. Um, loving me some Dallas Goddard, $4,900, fantastic price for what we're going to be expecting out of him. Hunter Henry, $4,800, same reason why we like uh, Keenan Allen, same reason why we like Hunter Henry. When Justin Herbert was in, when he needed first down, it really looked like he was going towards Hunter Henry. Great reason why you need to watch the games, folks. Watching Hunter Henry, watching how often they really attacked him when they really needed a big, uh, you know, a clutch first down. That is very important. You know, Hunter Henry leaps off the board, the board here for me for $4,800. Underneath that, Hayden Hurst, he made the list because it looks like Julio's not playing. Um, I do like the matchup regardless, but uh, Hayden Hurst on the list, again, if that team passes so much, Matty Ice averages over 50 uh, attempts per game. Hayden Hurst has got to be in your lineup. All Atlanta Falcons essentially are in your lineup. Uh, or at least on your radar. Speaking of radar, these are guys I want you to keep on your radar this week. Top of the list, I got Chase Claypool. This was if Deontay Johnson does not play. It does look like he is going to play, but if for whatever reason, he is a scratch. I like what I'm seeing out of Chase Claypool right now. James Washington does not seem to be getting the work. It looks like that number three receiver is Chase Claypool. So if Deontay Johnson, Juju get hurt in the future, Keep Chase Play Claypool on your mind, uh, both for season-long and daily fantasy lineups. Uh, Corey Davis, Adam Humphreys. Um, again, A.J. Brown does not play. Both of these guys didn't play in a fantastic matchup against Minnesota. I like Humphreys for $3,900. I think he is a must-play in your cash game lineups if A.J. Brown does not play. He's got your return on uh, investment both weeks in a row. For whatever reason, and his price doesn't change. For whatever reason, like he will get a good matchup and his price will go down or not move. I don't know. It doesn't really make sense to me. So, like Humphreys a lot. Uh, underneath that, I got Russell Gage. Loving what I'm seeing out of him. But even if Julio's in the game, I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Russell Gage. He's in that 5K-ish range right there. So, again, Russell Gage absolutely should be a player on your radar. Uh, Darrell Henderson Jr., uh, looks like Cam Akers has some bruised up ribs. He might not play. Malcolm Brown just had surgery on his finger. Doesn't look like he's going to play. So Daryl Henderson Jr., not a good matchup against Buffalo. But again, starting running back from the Rams in that 5K price range. I'm liking Darrell Henderson a lot uh, based on the price and uh, opportunity. Matchup not great, but he does check off two out of three. And last on this list, Justin Herbert. Uh, he's about $1,000 less than Kyler Murray this week. Great cupcake matchup against Carolina. He's going to get the opportunity, and the price is good. So, again, Justin Herbert, a guy you're going to want to keep on your radar. Before we wrap up the show, folks, uh, we did have a question, uh, fan question in our chat. Uh, Jody DeSazio, familiar face right here, asked, what rookie running back is going to have the biggest fantasy impact by the end of the year? I don't want to go chalk here. I don't want to go with the obvious answer, but... It's going to be really hard not to. Clyde Edwards Hilaire um, on the most explosive, one of the most explosive offenses in football right now in a system that just loves the pass catching running back. Uh, Darrell Williams got hurt. So Darwin Thompson's the only competition. Again, love me some Jonathan Taylor. But again, when, when game script's not in the Colts' favor, Naheem Hines is going to shine. And I think when game script's not in the favor of the Chiefs, Clyde Edwards Hilaire is still going to get work. So that's kind of the tiebreaker for me. Also, the fact that the Chiefs are probably going to score more points than the Colts. I like Clyde Edwards Hilaire more than Jonathan Taylor. But again, if you have either one of these guys, 
I'm loving it. If anything, I kind of like where you drafted Jonathan Taylor more than where you got Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Jonathan Taylor went end of second, early third, and Clyde Edwards Hilaire was in the first round. So uh, I like kind of I think Jonathan Taylor owners are doing better in fantasy than uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. But again, which rookie running back is going to have the biggest fantasy impact end of the year? I'm going Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I know it's a shock answer, but that's probably it. To recap, folks, my core four, Kyler Murray against Detroit. Feel free to double stack that with DeAndre Hopkins in your tournaments. Austin Eckler versus Carolina, $6,800. You feeling Josh Kelly more for $1,800 less? Totally fine with that. Calvin Ridley versus Tennessee, cupcake matchup. Uh, good price. Julio Jones not playing, $7,200. This guy is not touchdown reliant to get your return on investment. I like Calvin Ridley. Also like Russell Gage, opposite side of the field of him. And last but not least, my flag. Sits. It's in the ground. This is the guy I want. Drew Sample, $3,500 against Philly's linebacking core, which cannot cover tight ends. So I like uh, Drew Sample here, $3,500 for a total of $24,300. Question of the week. First person to answer this correctly in the chat, in the comments, gets a $1 DraftKings tickets. What current NFL quarterback currently leads in the NFL in pass attempts going in to week number three? Obviously, last night's games do not count guys and gals that's gonna wrap up the show i hope you had a good one i hope you enjoyed everything uh again money is won between 10 a.m and 1 p.m on sunday do your research do your homework check it out if you get a chance i know people got lives they got work they got more important things to do but if you get a chance try to rewatch some of these games see how the players actually scored what they scored don't just watch the box score the box score doesn't tell the story the games tell the story very important to see how that plays out folks that's going to do it for me good luck there on the uh fantasy gridiron again my name is the big ac if you have not already folks follow me on that youtube channel the fantasy life with ac also on facebook the fantasy life with ac and of course twitter give that follow and like at trivia with ac that's going to do it for me, folks. Hope you had a good week and good luck this Sunday on the Fantasy Gridiron. Take care, folks. Have a good one.